Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to this week's MathCast podcast. Today we are joined by Ryan from year 12, who uh, is a great chess player and he will talk to us a little bit about how he got into chess and I'll cover a bit about uh, how I got into chess, some of the openings and some of the math behind it. So uh, let's just start by stating that how chess links to math, because it might seem from a surface level that they're very two kind of unrelated things, but after both players move, there are 400 possible board setups. Just, just by moving two... Uh, different pieces and having one turn each. After the second pair of turns, there are 197,742 possible games. So as you might see, math is very involved in this game because there are so many different possibilities and there are chess bots that are kind of programmed to analyze all these games and give you uh, kind of how good or how bad your game is on in a certain position. So they, they'll need to know so many different move combinations so, to be able to tell you the best possible move to, for you to, to play. So, um, chess does, is sort of like maths in the terms of you have certain rules and you have uh, certain pieces. So, you know, each rules you have to, you know, sort of find out what you can do and each piece is given a um, certain amount of points. Therefore, you have to be able to distinguish um, whether it may be worth to lose a piece to gain a piece or whether you should you know keep the existing piece because of the amount of points um so i talked to mr gill uh, when i was uh, talking about hosting a chess tournament and one of the stuff that i did research is how you know chess helps with certain cognitive abilities you know chess is good because you know you have to sort of plan ahead before you play you know it's also can help you memorize equations for example because you need to you know you need to create a formula in the f- form of openings to you know to plan your game and make sure that you're able to you know get as much control as early as possible um chess also helps with stuff such as um uh, adhd you know there's a lot of people who have adhd who play chess because it helps them focus because you know there's a lot of stuff that you need to account for you know as she said there's up to, there's 121 million uh, possible games after just um, three moves so yeah I completely agree and I feel like one of the other things that chess really helps with is your memory because uh, chess is pretty much just memorizing patterns and which is why I really like puzzles on chess.com I don't know if you uh, do a lot of puzzles but I try to do puzzles as much as possible which is kind of the first thing I do on chess.com which is kind of the most instructive thing for me because for example if there's like a checkmate in one the only way i'll be able to recognize that in a real game is to play or to know the pattern at least which is why i, I play a lot of puzzles and uh puzzles are basically just like one move two move three move checkmates and they're just like find the best move in this position and i find them very like instructive so let's talk from kind of the beginning so how did you kind of get into chess when did you get into chess and what inspired you to kind of continue so um i got into chess actually quite recently i only started playing about six months ago and i got into chess because you know i learned that it helps like a lot with certain functions that are quite important in school um for example in many countries such as like russia for example it's completely mandatory to learn chess at a very early age and you know it's shown signs of you know like better development you know memorization good memory and it's just a really good um, skill that you know teaches you a lot of stuff in life you know like it it can help you you know make better decisions better quality decisions and under pressure which is stuff that a lot of kids need to learn to help them out in the future I feel like linking to what you said, one of the main things that I find that I struggle with is making decisions or making taking a choice. And I feel like chess definitely, definitely, definitely helps with that. Because if I'm in a difficult position where it's like, I think this is a good move, but I'm not 100% sure if it's a good move. What is the risk that it's not? And should I take it or should I not? And I feel like that applies to so many different parts of kind of what we're experiencing now as we're tra- starting to choose, like for me, our GCSEs and so on. And it's like one of those things that uh, it really helps with taking choices. And I feel like it might not directly link, but if you really think about it, chess is just a bunch of decisions that you make or choices that you take. You move this pawn, you can't move it back. So it's kind of like 
it's kind of life i bet i guess um so for me i kind of got into chess at a bit of a younger age i didn't get into it i just kind of learned how the pieces move and i used to play against close family and friends so it was like it was more of a thing where i want to beat them rather than i want to learn how to play chess and it just came kind of like progressively with it that i kind of learned how to like play or how to how to uh move the pieces and so on so uh what chess openings do you play kind of like most of the time um so most of the time i like to play wayward queen attack which is pretty much um when you move the the pawn in front of the king you move it uh, one ahead and then you move the queen all the way to uh, h6 and pretty much what th that does is it sets up the king for like an attack if he moves forward then he's already in check but the only problem with that is you know m a lot of experienced players do like see this stuff coming and it can, some can sometimes be easy to counter and it does put your you know your queen at risk but like if they don't see it because you know as i said there's like a lot of stuff that could happen then chances are you can uh, win the game quite quickly one of the other things about chess which is really beautiful is that knowing your opponent and that's why i feel like i play a lot better when it's face to face rather than online and i feel like the reason for that is because i know how good or bad my opponent is and what tricks they might fall for so for example when i was uh, really young some of my uh, close friends they knew that i was really bad at chess so they used to play the uh, scholars made against me and i would fall for it every single time and then i realized oh they're lining up the queen and the bishop to checkmate me so i need to try to avoid that and then i started getting into like watching some videos how to avoid scholars mate how to punish your opponent for playing the scholars mate and then one day they came up to me and they were like do you want to play chess i was like sure and then i pretended to fall for it and then suddenly i attacked their queen and the queen got trapped so that, that's kind of like you learn from your mistakes as well which is a big part of uh, life as well kind of linking to chess as well uh, so for me the main openings i like to play with white is the london i know it's a very kind of classic kind of the thing you learn first but i really like the london because it kind of like first of all it's the first opening that i learned properly and that's just why i quite like it and it's very like simple you can't really really punish the london that much it's like simple opening you develop your pieces you get your pawns out and they're placed in a pretty good position so later on if you want to like if you want to promote to a queen it's pretty easy to do because they're all kind of lined up in a pyramid shape so it's very easy to push and uh, attack with black i play the karo khan which is kind of like attacking the center if if they play e5 which is uh pretty which is pretty often that they do just attack the center and try to kind of gain space i feel like Karakhan is one of the best openings because they you gain a lot of space with it and uh yeah so one of the things that we mentioned is watching videos and kind of uh there are a lot of ways to improve in in chess one of the ways that i improved a lot was uh watching a lot of videos of people playing because i'm like oh my god they're so good how did they see that and then i try to get motivated because i want to be uh, like them obviously I'm, I'm not but I want to improve and stuff and kind of talk about how how do you improve what things do you do so with chess there's so many ways in which you can improve your games but what I like to do is I like to first of all look back at games when you're looking back at games you can tell like when you've made your mistakes because like with apps such as chess.coms it tells you your blunders it tells you your mistakes and then you can see and then you can reflect on it you can be like oh that's what I did wrong instead i should have done this so like if you're ever in like a similar position you know you can ensure you don't make the same mistake what else you can do which works quite well is just play against yourself like simply playing against yourself that helps so much because like when you're playing against yourself you can find weaknesses in your own games in your own positions which is like a nice way which will then allow you later on when you're playing like another game against someone to like learn how you can you know take advantage of um, those stuff that you've learned by yourself um, I mean yeah also like learning new openings and stuff that always helps like I learned how to fork the other day which was which helped me quite a lot it you know it's just good because it also reduces the amount of time that you're using as well which you know which you can then you know use to you know put the person under pressure I also feel like that time bit is kind of something that can be used against you because for me the biggest weakness in my 
chess is that I can't manage my time. I start to play and it ends up that I'm just losing so bad because I a lot of the times I play Blitz now because my problem with Rapid is that I dedicate like 30 minutes of my time to playing a Rapid game and then I end up getting so mad because I lost and it's like not worth it because I mean I, I still play a bit of Rapid but it's only when I'm like want to learn chess and not just when I'm like playing it for fun because for fun I feel like Rapid can be very time draining and I don't understand how they do it which is like these big GMs they just sit at the board with like three hours and then they get extra time as well and it's like how do you spend three hours focusing on one thing to do I feel like not just chess but anything in general it has to be like a true true passion of yours which is like it's too much time, too much dedication. But uh, for me, I just play Blitz now and I just lose all the time. And it's just so, uh, it's so funny, but it's also like kind of interesting because with Blitz, there's so many other different tactics than just play well. It's also like, if you're losing, just play quickly and your opponent will not be able to checkmate in like 10 seconds, or for example, if they've got, so because for example, I end up in games where I've got 30 seconds and they've got like 10 seconds, but I am completely losing. I'm like a queen down. And what ends up happening is I just blunder all my pieces because I know that they won't be able to find a checkmate in 10 seconds. So I end up winning on time. And it's like that feeling of like, I did not deserve to win, but I won. So it's, it's okay. So that's one of the things that uh, I kind of play. How do you play rapid blitz? What time control? So I play rapid because with blitz, I just genuinely do not, my brain cannot like function. Like I don't know, I like panic and I use my time. But you know, that's something I need to work on. But um, yeah, the thing with Rapid as well, as you said, yeah, it's really time consuming. So that's why I'm very selective on when I do play chess. And the thing with Rapid as well is that it's so, you get quite disengaged, like quickly. Like, I don't know about you, but I get like quite disengaged after like a while. And once you get disengaged, that's when you start making mistakes and you start forgetting like, oh, don't move this piece, don't do that, don't do this. And that's when you like you lose the game but like that's why i play rapid so that i can like focus. i can focus and you know that focus helps a lot as i said earlier like for example in exams like two eggs we got like two hour exams now and like using that focus need to keep keeping that focus you know it does help to an extent with like stuff like exams you know you need to be able to you know engage your mind a lot you know and you know that will help you know it helps make better decisions and stuff you were given an opportunity to start a chess club and i felt like that was something that we definitely need because when the chess tournament was held there were so many people who were interested and i felt like that's something that would definitely kind of inspire and help everyone who's interested in chess to uh, expand the skills that we mentioned before so is that something that you're planning on doing yeah um, i'm definitely trying to organize a chess club um, I just need to, you know, sort of find the people who are interested and then sort of finding timings that will suit everyone because everyone's got like a lot of busy schedules, everyone's got like different stuff and if I'm able to, I will find like a time that's suitable for everyone and, you know, everyone can sort of like play against each other. I could maybe get in like a few of the year 12s and 13s who like play a lot more often than we do to, you know, teach us new stuff and, you know, I'll try definitely to I'd definitely try to get the youngest kids to come to chess club because like I just feel like it helps so much with their learning like further on but yeah I'll definitely do that and I'm also planning to host another tournament um, I'm not sure I'm not sure exactly on the dates but this tournament will be a little bit bigger and it will have uh, it will have an entry fee but it will ha also have a price so you know I can maybe try get more people to come and uh i'll be having parents as well who can play because you know chess is not limited to like an age group you know it doesn't have an age group so i'll try to get parents as well to come and yeah that sounds great i'm very excited so hopefully that that comes soon just let me know and i'll i'll, I'll be there so thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast